Hey everyone, it's Christian, local Vancouver realtor. And for today's video blog, I wanna to talk to you about what I'm seeing here in the front lines of the real estate market and how competitive and aggressive it is out there right now. And also I wanna share with you signs of successful buyers. Uh, you know, the things, the attitude qualities that I see that help people uh, get over the finish line first and get on the podium in the, the gold medal position. And what I mean by that is uh, getting the keys to the castle, getting the home. It's a tough market out there. And so we need a little bit of motivation here. Not just the buyers, you the buyer, but also buyers agents, because it's tough on them too. So the first couple of things I want to say to you is, one, uh, we're just seeing multiple offers on everything, all product types, houses, townhouses, condos, and I'm seeing as much as 30 offers on a single property. Uh, quite unheard of. I, I really haven't seen it this busy since 2016 for, for houses. And the other thing that I'm seeing about that is, and I give you an example, this is from a Langley townhouse last week where we looked at this, considered an offer on it, but backed away. What I found very interesting was this townhouse, you know, standard three bed, two bath, just, uh, you know, about six, 700 meters off the Trans Canada Highway in Langley. And they received 12 offers. 11 of those were subject free, no condition to financing, which means no condition to it doing an inspection or reading the strata documents. The buyers had all done their homework up front before they ever went uh, to make, to ever made the offer on the property, which is quite impressive. Uh, normally you don't see that many subject free offers out there. And that just tells me how tight the market is, but how aggressive and sharp a lot of these buyers are. And I think a lot of that stems from losing out on one or two offers, maybe the, the week before. And, you know, a lot of buyers will wise up and, and, and sharpen their, 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 their toolkit and get better the second time around. And you're really going to have to do that to, to have a chance at a property. The other thing I've seen, which I usually don't see this much of, is bully offers. I like to call it a preemptive strike. This is where you know you see a listing hit the market on a Monday and the listing agent will say, we're looking at offers next week, Tuesday. And what do they do? Of course, they, they do showings throughout the week. And one of those parties comes in and says, uh, I know you guys are asking 899, here's 1.05 million for the property. We'll give it to you right now, no conditions. Imagine. A quarter million or $150,000 over the asking price, very enticing for a seller. And they didn't wait until the offer deadline the following week. They just put in an offer right off the bat, a little bit of shock and awe, as I call it. And we're seeing more of that as well. And it's very strong bully offers, $150,000 over asking in some cases, with no conditions, of course. And so that is another um, feature of this real estate market right now that you have to be ready for. Best thing you can do, I think, is you really have to be ready, Johnny on the spot, to go and look at properties on a Wednesday night, on a Thursday morning with your agent. So be ready to do that, all right? Now, uh, what can you do? What are signs of successful buyers? Here's a half a dozen things that I've noticed and the very first one is just mental toughness. This is not an easy market. It's, I call it, you know, cr the crawling over broken glass to get a home market, because that's what it feels like too for agents like myself. You have to have a lot of persistence, but mental toughness, guys, is really gonna help you in this instance. Uh, I'll give you an example of this. I had a, a couple last year, 2021, and we were successful on a townhouse. The night before, we lost out and multiple offers on a townhouse and, and, and just lost out. The very next day, the, uh, the this couple said, okay, well, we like this other one. Let's make an offer on that one. And you know what? We ended up getting it. And we were the, uh, the top offer out of five and positioned ourselves to uh, basically close the deal. But that's an example of mental toughness. If you take a setback in this market, just pick yourself up, get ready to go out and look at more open houses, private viewings. Don't let a setback stop you. 
Now, the second thing you got to do is you have to be open-minded. Um, here's another example. Uh, we were working with a group last summer and again we lost out on multiple offers and this time it was really close I think there was 12 offers we were, ended up being the second best offer and we just got clipped by seven or eight grand they're right in the last in the last 20 minutes of it and uh, that was a pretty tough one for myself as well I remember that that was a bit of, that was heartbreak and it certainly was for my clients well Again, these guys were very, very persistent and had a lot of mental toughness. About two weeks later, we ended up moving from Port Moody, looking in Richmond. And in Richmond, all of a sudden, we found a gem of a townhouse. And we basically got into a one-to-one -one dance offer negotiation with the seller and we were able to get the property. We got $50,000 off the asking price. The city's building a brand new park right in, right outside their backyard. I mean, it's a beautiful townhouse and they get a two car garage. So uh, it ended up working out just well. So being open in that case, being flexible and moving from one pocket of the city, in that case, Port Moody, and looking at Richmond as another option really worked out well for them. So be open to different locations. The third is have a sense of urgency. I, the successful buyers have urgency. They move with, uh, with, with, with gusto. And I give a best example. I think it was when uh, when we bought our first place. Actually, I remember we started our search over the Christmas holidays and in Burnaby. And there was about two feet of snow in in Burnaby. Well, maybe a foot. And this was over the the December 2016, five years ago now. And we ended up uh, searching while most people were having, t you know, cutting turkey and, and having their Christmas dinner. But we ended up finding a, a great place right there on New Year's Day. We had the offer in the same, you know, within two hours. And we basically secured the property. We've done incredibly well on that home. Um, and so, and I think what made the difference there was the fact that we moved with a sense of urgency. We were quicker, faster. We had a sense of purpose. So buyers who have, a, I find, who who say things like, you know, we want to be moved in by Christmas. We want to be moved in by Canada Day. That's a real advantage to have for yourself, okay? So have a, have a goal in mind. Next, I'd say the fourth thing is you want to learn fast. You want to be mentally adaptable to, um, you know, the, a very fluid situation. And I, I'm going to take you back to that very first example I gave for the, for the couple we helped uh, who had, you know, initially failed uh, on a townhouse offer. Well, that second offer, which was the following day, we found ourselves as one of five offers. We were sort of in the middle of the pack there and trying to elbow our way to the front of the line. And I had to work the phones very aggressively with the seller's agent to find out where exactly we were. Well, after several phone calls, a lot of questions on my part, I had a sense that we were about twenty to thirty thousand dollars off the pace. And I got on the phone with my clients. We had a good chat. I let them talk, husband and wife together, and said, "Look, you, you know, let's talk again in about five ten minutes." They spoke, called me back, and said, "Okay, let's jump up in price." And we ended up jumping up a, a hell of a lot of money, and we got that house very quickly and that was that was in the in the midst of maybe 20 minutes and i was so impressed with my clients that they were able to process what was happening in real time and in within 15 to 20 minutes make a significant improvement to their offer they've been living in the townhouse probably almost a year now and you know it's gone up a lot in value too and they love it out there so you got to be able to learn fast be quick and adaptable to these um to all the moving parts in a, in a real estate purchase especially when you're facing such a competitive environment where you constantly have other uh, offers, uh, other groups trying to leapfrog you in that multiple offer process. Okay, the fifth one I wanted to go over with you is looking at the big picture. 
looking at the big numbers versus the little numbers. And I think sometimes people get a little too focused on the little things like, you know, how much the property taxes are or what the maintenance fees are. You know, once in a while I might hear, well, the maintenance fees are a little too high. They're about $50 higher than I wanted to pay. That is, uh, I would say that's the up, you, you want to look, turn it upside down. And what you want to do is look at the big picture and think, well, what do I need to do to get this house or this condo or this townhouse? Because in this type of market, that same product might be worth $50,000 by the end of next month. So you don't want to get uh, hooked or stuck on $50 a month. You want to be focusing on the $50,000 a month. I have a friend who calls this, you know, uh, he says stepping over $100 bills to pick up pennies. We want to pick up those $100 bills. Focus on the big numbers, getting the property locked up because in this type of market, uh, you know, six months means a lot of money. It can, be, it can literally mean $100,000 if you're looking out there to buy a house, even a townhouse. So, all right. And the last one I will say is six, don't time the market. This is, I can't stress this enough. And this is the this is absolutely the worst thing you can ever do in real estate. And the best thing you can do is just if you're ready to make a purchase, you're starting a family, you're you're you know you're putting down roots in Vancouver, Surrey, wherever it is, just go and pull a trigger on a place. You know, people who try to buy at the top of the market, um, they just constantly second guess themselves, and they are living with doubt. And you don't want to do that to yourself. I did have an instance where over the last couple of years, I worked with someone who was constantly worried about uh, where the market would go and was hoping he could pull the trigger when the market came down. Unfortunately, the, mar the market for that type of product is probably up about three to four hundred thousand dollars on the type of townhouse that uh, this person was really had their heart on. And it's it's just one of those things that over the long run, you know, over a decade, whatever you buy, whether it's a house, condo, townhouse, it's gonna be worth a lot more than 10 years prior. So you definitely wanna just pull the trigger once you're ready. Look, great example, go back to 2016, just before the provincial government, that was the liberal government then, brought in a 15% foreign buyer tax. If you look at the chart of where the detached market was at that time, it was absolutely at the peak. And then it came down, probably about 10, 15%. If you had bought the month before the foreign buyer tax was introduced, you probably, let's say a $1.5 million house, you were, you were down about $300,000. But if you just held on to it today, that's over 2 million. So you gotta be able to ride out the waves of the market. Uh, I can't stress that enough. Do not try to time the market. You know, on, on Wall Street, they say, <laughs> they, they have a phrase for it, trying to time the market, you get your face ripped off. <laughs> so it's pretty strong language from stockbrokers, but you get the point. When you're ready, you're, you're ready to pull the trigger, you're ready to start a family, uh, or you know, your mom's coming in from the Philippines, whatever the case may be, uh, you and you need some space, you go ahead and you get that home. It's the best thing you can ever do. And you're gonna own it for a long time. You're gonna be just fine. So I hope that has really helped. That's what, those are the signs I see in successful buyers. If you got comments, leave them below. Feel free to reach out. And of course, in this home buying journey where it's a tough one, I wish you the very best of luck. If you got any questions, comments, leave those below.